live and give some talks on the evidence-based practice in optometry. And I prepared this optometry, this evidence-based practice in optometry. I think this should be an integral part of our practice. Like as being optometrists, we are the heart of the eye and vision care. The profession, the profession itself is a novel and rewarding. And the service and the care we render should be, I mean, should be accurate, unbiased, reproducible, and and uh, this uh, evidence-based practice talk is not about the case presentations or the any case discussions. But uh, I'm trying to present the uh, uh, discussions in such a way that you can render a best practice in the clinic in which whichever area you are practicing. So objective of my present today's uh, talk is at is the to explain the basic idea and application of evidence-based practice and to describe and demonstrate the process of acquiring evidence to be applied in optometric practice so what is evidence-based practice rosenberg and donald in 1995 describes the evidence-based practice as the process of systematically finding so systematically is the important word here it's a keyword so that's all what about today's our talk appraising and sorry, systematically finding, appraising, appraising means critically commenting and using contemporary, uh, contemporaneous research findings as the basis for clinical decision. So we use these systematic findings and appraising in our clinical decision making. In example, this is just a prototype of example. This is not any of the clinical cases. This is hypothetical conditions. A four-year-old child has a myopia of minus 0.75 diopter. Do you consider prescribing glasses to the child provided other clinical findings are within normal limit? For these questions, uh, there are five questions I have for the re uh, report uh, listed here, over here. Like, is the refractive error within the normal range of the child's age? Will this particular child's refractive error emetropize? Will this level of refractive error disrupt normal visual development or functional vision? Will prescribing spectacles improve visual functions of the or visual functions or the functional vision? Will prescribing glasses interfere with the normal uh, process of emetropization? So I've taken this uh, source from the uh, journal of uh, journal from the clinical and experimental optometry. So there are five questions I just put over here. So give an answer to these questions. Now, when we appraise based on these questions now sorry uh, just a minute so yeah okay when i did the search i used the pmc in pubmed i use ncbi pubmed and in pubmed you can see pmc under the yellow yellow box so there you can select what sort of search you criteria you want to set i just put pmc i put my PR as a uh, condition treat children as a, a patient and the prescribing the glasses as an intervention. So three entities I put, and then I command the search. When I give command the search, and I use the soft certain filters like 10 years and other, um, then I could found 47 articles. Actually, without filter, I could found 178 items, uh, which uh, which is seen in this yellow box. If you can see the mouse I'm moving, Actually, it retired 178 items. So it, it is actually for a person to read each individual paper is not practically possible. And we want to take the best evidence to give the treatment. So in that case, then I use a filter for the recent papers, 10 years. Then I came to the 47 articles. And when I review the 47 articles, not all full reading. I just look at the keywords, which matches closely. Out of this, I could find only few papers. So that means it saves our time, and we can review those papers. Now, again, reviewing paper doesn't mean that we read whole of the articles. Only we extract the, we only look at the information which we need. So in that case, uh, this is one article. How do we consider? In one paper, it is said that. If the refractive error is outside the 95% range of the refraction for the given age, according to any current available data, it should be prescribed. 
that is the systematic approach and the, i have further highlighted this for the four years to the early school years might be a minus one that or lower amounts if it improves visual acuity and the child appreciates it that is correct for the function can give full correction at this stage so we need to focus what is mean can give it doesn't say that must give can be given or can give so this also emphasize that what should be the approach so there, there is no 100 percent right or wrong something like that and what is said that correction of minus 0 0.7 diopter or less even improves visual acuity and also clinical opinion suggests that correcting less than one diopter to 1.5 diopter in preschoolers and uh, le uh, less than minus zero uh, approximately less than minus 0 0.50 diopter to minus two diopter in school children um, can be corrected so for this source, I, I took the Journal of Clinical Experimental Optometry. It is a peer-reviewed paper. So uh, I mean, because I'm talking about evidence, so I'm talking about the peer review here. Type of article, this is a review article. So then again, we will come, what sort of, what is that review means? We'll come later. And we look at date of publication. It is recent or old, just to indicate that. And for this comment, what are the sources that the journal, the author had derived for this source? So the authors, derived the source from the books and book chapters that they have listed here the journal and the clinical guidelines so they use the all the information gather all these information and put this guideline into this so that it can be appraised properly so this is the just background i'm giving now we will go into detail about that one more example i'm putting over here so that is part-time patching for amblyopia is as effective as full-time patching so in this case also i did pmc sort in ncbi i put part-time patching i will tell you the meaning of this capital a and d later on also full-time patching a and d amblyopia when i hit this command i it resulted in 11 items in the list normally when we do the google search you might find thousands of articles hundreds of articles you you will you just get overwhelmed and lost into finding which is the proper article so it's about the how it's about the practice that how we save time and we keep the clinical judgment quickly so this is i found 11 items and just i look at the title where these three items found i only could found two papers in 11 items, only two papers I found. I just, I'm again, just to make the distinctions. So there are two articles you can see here. I've got over here. Um, the first thing is you can see full-time occlusion versus part-time occlusion in treatment of monoclonal amylopia. There are two journals I've taken from. Part-time versus full-time occlusion therapy for treatment of amylopia. So the, the, the key words which I'm looking uh, well, you can see over here the first paper the first paper is a original article it is same mentioned at the it is a review paper in the original paper it is said a randomized control trial you can sign this highlighted in yellow color the second paper is of course a meta-analysis and as I looked at the uh, conclusion conclusion in the first paper which is in the left says that full-time occlusion in children is more effective than the part-time occlusion but in the right paper it says that full-time and part-time patchings are equally effective but part-time patching should be given at least six hours per day so even in this same um, inquiry we found two facts one said part-time is full-time is better others say both are equal but part time should be given at least 6 hours so if you look at this journal this journal is a uh, uh, park j med science that means pakistan journal of medical science the second paper which is in the right is a uh, it is the journal of current ophthalmology 
and I look at its zonal metrics, also citation score, uh, impact factor, and the Simago zonal rank. The right one is found to be a little bit better. Now the other uh, difference is the randomized control trial and meta-analysis. Which one is a stronger evidence? We should look at this. Then we we can decide that. A particularly, I go with particular journal. So in this case, the paper in the right side has more evidence than the paper in the left side. So I prefer to select the right paper in the right hand side. The first is to render best and updated clinical services. I have given a, 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 a small statement in the bracket at the given facility. Sometimes what happens, even if you give best and updated, even if we know that best and updated clinical services are reported in the literature, that may not be available in our practice. So at the, at the sort of given circumstances, what is the best thing available in our practice? We need to work on that. So that is why I said at the given facility. And the other reason is the assign, uh, it develops a scientific culture in patient care. So the knowledge and the degree you obtain mm -hmm. and you work as clinicians, you build up your personal experience. And you this way you build up the scientific inquiring skills and you apply so it's a kind of scientific culture a managing knowledge in this case we need to always upgrade and organize in the nice current level of knowledge and systematic uh i just sub intelligible and and appropriate way so this is the for the managing knowledge a system for change in this case we analyze and audit the quality and ac acceptability of the care System for change means not that you from optometry, now you move to the engineering. So I mean here, you analyze and audit the quality and acceptability of the care. So we look at the care, and we if we feel that this care is not appropriate, we update, and accordingly, mm -hmm. we again manage. The another reason is efficient and effective decision care. In this case, mm -hmm. it should be guided by the well-informed decision. When informed means it's a scientific, I mean scientific knowledge, and you assess the variation in optometric care. So we want that the optometric practice is standardized and improve confidence in decision making. So that also builds us the, improve, the uh, confidence in our practice. And cost benefit, which is uh, mostly the important part of the, uh, the optometric practice. I think it's a practice all over because the cost and benefit is always there, should be there. So this performs only for that means here i put that perform only pertinent investigation guided by the clinical questions like you said that clinical questions the patient complained with the symptom of dry eye so would you like to give all the investigations to come to the conclusion of the diagnosis no we normally look at which of the investigations are key investigations that helps us give the diagnosis so that saves time saves the resources and saves the cost so that means the, that gives the uh, better practice patient satisfaction can be seen so you can get this incentive for your cost in relation to the you get the benefit i mean in in relation to the cost so that means that also helps standardize the cost of service incentives you can standardize that what should be your chair time so based on that at investigation and expenses Incent incentives to perform again the best practice wins the heart of the patients so that means patient satisfaction is directly indirectly related to the growing your practice so evidence base is important in that sense also experience in better patient care and satisfactions because you have evidence based means you have a definitive guidelines for your treatment and up to date current practice. So beyond that, they are organization level also. So I just highlighted some that changing public expectations, and I put one in bracket individual as professional accountability. So professional accountability, uh, individual level also applied, but in the organization level also applied. And this practice actually, if there is a legal dilemmas, also sometimes there is a case in court or something like for the professional. Uh, in that case, also we can withstand with the evidence that we are right and appropriate so that also saves our uh, saves our that legal project from the legal prosecutions 
Uh, I will not go detail about this, the, like political consensus. They are the international consensus, technological advances. So these are not going in detail. I'm just putting over here, just to let you know that if somebody has a plan for the organized level, they, how this can be incorporated, this can be talked later. Now, I'm going to the process of evidence practice. I think in the couple of days ago, you have uh, you are you are, you become accustomed with the 6A in the management of uh, corneal ulcer. Now today we talk about 5A, but not in the disease. We are in the process of evidence-based practice. So these five A's are: we start with ask to formulate answerable clinical questions. Second is acquire acquire the information source for the best evidence third is appraise critically assess the evidence fourth is apply the appraise evidence to the patient and practice fifth is audit evaluate outcome of evidence-based practice so this five a or cycle of five a forms a process of evidence based practice we will in very quick with examples in each of these uh, it won't take a long time because i'm not talking about the principle and theories so I will start from ask. 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 So first component is ask. So for the ask, we use a PICO module. PICO module, what does that stand for? P usually stands for patient. Patient that can be patient's age, gender, ethnicity. The person also, P stands for person also, P stands for problem also, condition or disease like AMD, my IPS, CBS, whatever is there. I stands for intervention. That is that just these are some of the examples only, like surgery, lenses, patching, the, uh, drugs, the, uh, the investigative, some of the investigative procedures like OCT, topography. The C stands for comparison. That could be control or maybe just a placebo. And the final is outcome. O stands for outcome. Outcome means that could be diagnosis, prognosis, therapy, magnitude, like for example, visual acuity, myopia progression, scarring, optic atrophy, etc. So we we should not forget that. What are the if we want to make a answerable clinical questions? Pico helps us to frame that questions. Now let's look at task one to. Uh, uh, to clarify how we use this go. Uh, I just read the question first. A low dose atropine is an as effective as multifocal lens in preventing my PR progression in young children of age between 8 and 11 years. So I will, I, this is the uh, clinical question uh, I put. Now I put this clinical question into PICO format. P-I-C-O. P is here. Patient or person. So patient here is a young child, young children. Uh, specifically, if you want to use a tag as a age, age group eight to 11 years. Intervention is a use of low dose atropine. So I put atropine as an intervention. C as a comparison. So we are comparing the, the effect of atropine with multifocal lens, multifocal lens. So I just put multifocal lens. And O stands for my PR progression, preventing my PR progression. So I, we can just put my PR progression. So I hope this is this makes clear how we formulate our word. So we specifically use keywords for the search. We do not use whole of the sentence that may lead to the in number of um, uh, retrieving in number of articles, which we do not want. Task two. Let's look at the task two. Does consumption of omega-3 fatty acid minimize AMD progression in elderly patients? Again, these questions we are formatting into PICO, E-I-C-O. So P here stands for patient population. Here is elderly patients. A is query. Maybe you can find, if you find that a patient in your clinic with 65 years, maybe you can put 65 years or female, something like that. And I stands for omega-3 fatty acid. This is the concept giving this therapy. So it's an intervention. There is no as such comparison, so I just put none. 
and O stands for outcome. So outcome is whether it stops progression or my, so I, uh, sorry, AMD. I just put AMD progression at this point. So there is no comparison. So it is, it is not, doesn't mean that we should always have the comparison also. Let's look at one more example. Task three. Is the OCT better than HRT in analysis of retinal nerve fiber layer thickness assessment in IMIPA for the diagnosis of glaucoma in old age? So here again, P, patient and population, old age patients, and we say that must include high myopia. So when we search, we put must include high myopia also. Then intervention is OCT, comparison is HRT, and uh, outcome is if diagnosis of glaucoma. So diagnosis of glaucoma, glaucoma. So this way we frame our keywords, we derive the keywords from our clinical questions, then we put into search. So let's go to the second part, uh, acquire. So A2, A2 is acquire. Now we have formulated a question, a clinical questions from out from the clinical problem. We found the keywords in this case. Now we acquire this. Normally we acquire, use acquire to identify sources and collect relevant information. And this can be, we, we can find this information from in number of sources, like the peer review literatures. We can search the peer review literatures, look at the research evidence. We can review with the experience of the seniors, also colleagues, also in that case. Only thing is, what is the uh, usefulness of that evidence, relevance of that evidence, and reliability of that evidence? We should be, we should be here. So then we use, usually we acquire determined with the help of the keywords, and we we can also refer to the pyramid of evidence so that the in information which you collect is where it lies in the pyramid of evidence. Uh, I'm showing the pyramid evidence. So sorry, so database and sources. These are just of the example I'm putting here. Uh, I'm not recommending searching it each and individual. I just for the difference. Like electronic databases, you can use Medline, PubMed, Google Scholar. There's so number, so many databases. Journals, you can use journals, peer review journals, textbooks, systematic reviews. For systematic reviews, uh, Cochrane Library is used. Pre-appraisal information we use. Pre-appraisal information is the critical analysis of the research report. It's a summary of the critical analysis of the research report. So that can be found in different like info retriever, dynamate. There are different sorts of things. And journal and optometry website also we can use. Clinical guidelines like American Optometry Association clinical practice guidelines. There are different guidelines available. Professional organizational website also we can view. We can ask from the people, colleagues, what the things and general internet sort also like Google, Yahoo. So there are a number of databases we can use to retrieve our information. Excuse me, I'm hearing something background noise actually. If, uh, yeah, I think uh, the mic is not uh, muted. Please. Uh, I Because I'm hearing a lot of background noise. Is is it fine now, sir? Guys, it's your internet. Uh, still, it is common. Uh, I, I kindly uh, request. Okay, now, sir. I kindly request everybody to Cheers. just mute the mic. Mike. So, in the pyramid of evidence, if you look at the pyramid of evidence, here you can see a pyramid of evidence. I start from the bottom. The top is the most appropriate we call. The, so bottom is the expert opinion, like review article, review articles and textbooks. And there, uh, second in the pyramid is studies. Mike is disturbing here. So here you can see uh, randomized control trials, cohort studies, case control studies, case series as reports. They are also actually prioritized a randomized clinical trial. We will look at the, this again, uh, type of these studies. Then coming to the synthesis, coming to the synthesis, we look at the systematic reviews and meta-analysis. They are better than the original studies. 
then we can use synopsis which is critically appropriate journal articles that means uh, as i said the it is a summary of the critical review of the uh, specific um, uh, clinical condition or the clinical questions and summaries like critical appropriate topics evidence based guidelines like the american optometric uh, associations uh, american optometric council they gives specific guidelines they have developed specific guidelines for certain conditions that can also be used. So the, you can see that in, based on this, which is in the rank, higher article rank. So if you find the article, like uh, if you find article, critically appraised article, and if you want to compare the, the articles found like in original articles, you definitely look uh, prefer to uh, be, believe in the article, which is as a higher rank. So this higher ranking uh, that also help us determine which evidence we should follow this is just one guideline you can review this in the uh, the link uh, which i provided over here now coming to the boolean operators I, as i said that and or uh, there are one more called not so normally we use uh, like if you use and that usually narrow down our thoughts for example i said here headed and conversion insufficiency so this when we put headache and conversion insufficiency only those article which has these both terms it is listed now broadening your search if you use or that actually broaden your search headache or astenopia that means it find articles either containing headache or astenopia there is one word called not 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 if we put not then it like headache, not conversion insufficiency. That means if the article contains both headache and conversion insufficiency, that article is not uh, uh, fine in your search. Only you find article which contains only headache. So this way we can uh, control our search and minimize the number of article retrieved. And we can use limiters also. So we use different sort of filters like date. So you, you might be say that 2015 onward, maybe 2018. If you found 1000 article, you might just put 2019 and 20. So like it's human, mostly because we are clinical practice, so we definitely put human. And in the search, we can put not animal studies. Like we can put gender, age, ethnicity, country, based on type of publications. Like we use that pyramid and study design. So this way also we can narrow down our search and we can find the article which are very much pertinent to our, our clinical uh, i'm coming to the tag again tag. normally what we do is we source article by directly by the title most of us source article directly by using title some used by the publications some used by i think the language mostly we look at the english only some use keywords some use others and if you uh, uh, i hope in the right side i put one photos of pubmed where you can find pubmed in small box so if you click on that uh, not in this website but if you click on in your search you can find the list that shows the tags which tag you want to use and this column is definitely used for search i will talk about this now later uh, in detail so here I highlighted mesh, medical subject heading. And this is uh, frequently used in uh, searching scientific literatures. And uh, that helps us narrow down our source. Uh, I will show you a, a bit detail about this. So if you, in the same website page, I have uh, marked with a red arrow circle uh, in the right bottom corner, I think you can find mesh data base. Uh, here, if you click in this mesh database, that leads to the mesh search. Or, or other way you can do is directly from the, the PubMed, which you found in the top uh, left corner, uh, which you found PubMed. From that, also directly you can select mesh. So, two either way you can select it. Once you select it, uh, sorry, once you select, I'm just given an example over here again. Keratoconus is associated with vernal conjunctivitis in children. I want to find answer for this 
issue. So here the patient is PA children. Intervention is a keratoconus, sorry, pernal conjunctivitis. Comparison is non and output is keratoconus. So I started with, if you can see the left side web page, uh, in the top corner, I have written vernal conjunctivitis. This is in the mesh. You can in the left corner in the search, you can find mesh, M E S H. So it's a mesh search. When I put vernal conjunctivitis, it gives this web page. When I click, and in the bottom left corner, you can see the uh, few takes in the like a presented in a stair. So they are presented in the hierarchical order. From here also, you can specifically see what it is means. You can see detail. You can see the classifications. So there also you can select. And in the top, uh, first finding of this is definition, actually. Conjunctive ID allergy, what is this? It gives the definition. Then in, you can see the second round red color highlight in the left corner. Here I checked as a complications. So complication of vernal content divided. So I check complication, then I put add to the mesh builder. This is the right top corner, uh, which I've shown with the arrow also. So if you click add to the mesh builder, and it automatically the vernal content divides, including this complication goes into this small box, which is at the right top corner. Then what I did, again, I put Keratoconus as a second keyword. Then once I put, I repeat the same thing and I put, and finally again, I put children. So you can see now this in the right top corner. Then when I click it, now in this time, it shows up with different uh, list of the, the list of the findings. So not like the in the left. So it, that means there are not many papers in that. So here, I I directly select a child, uh, not adult children. I just click child and again I, I put add to the mesh work. So that gives now in the right corner, right top corner, you can see under the red circle what are the keywords I use for the search. And I use this all are end. Now, then after that, I feel that now I can proceed with the search. Then I'll just click search PubMed. Then it gives a very few number of articles containing these keywords, and you can find out. Once you found the article, then you just need to appraise that. What is the hierarchical order of this article? What is the relevance? We come later about that person. So I hope you can use this search criteria to narrow down your search, not being finding overwhelmingly thousands of papers. Now, this search can be, again, do we can do this with one more ways. I'm just showing here again in next slide now it's called advanced search in the same PubMed, you can find if you look at the left side i've checked with the red box advanced so if you click advanced it gives you the page like in which is i put here in the right side so this is a little bit more convenient for search so here you can see many box in the vertical column and as you can see the keywords again, conjunctivitis and keratoconus and children. I just put conjunctivitis here because when I put coronal conjunctivitis, it gives non zero results. So I just put at the moment conjunctivitis. Then I put conjunctivitis, keratoconus, children. Then you, if you see the left corner, all sorts are just incorporated with and. And that means these three terms should be should be present in all all of these sorts. So you can change and to or or not. You can expand these boxes if you want to include more like uh, 14 years old child, children. Between maybe you can specify by age or maybe gender, you can add this. So this way we can do the, uh, we can acquire the information. I hope this up to this point is clear how we are going to do this. Uh, would you uh, hear me, please? I just want to confirm that if. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are, you are audible. OK, thank you. And I hope uh, everybody okay, listening to you. you. OK, thank you very much. Now, additional resources for PICO-based search. There are two more uh, sites I put over here. 
one in the left is the is present in Medline PubMed, which has given the Pico format. This the link to that is also given here. In the right in the trip, if you look at the checker box, it is you can see small letter Pico. So if you click here, that gives you the format of Pico. So there also you can put keywords and do the search. So there are few more other search uh, available. Some uh, university search uh, maybe they are paid or unpaid. Mostly they are paid, so we cannot access. But these are freely available tools we can use. Now the th third part of this uh, uh, evidence-based process is the appraisal. So appraisal is a little bit tricky and difficult part so far in this process actually, because now you find article like suppose if you find forty articles, you may not may not want to read all of them. First of all, you just find out where the, these keywords are seen, then you just look at the uh, title, then you can look at the abstract. If you feel that you need to find more information in detail information, then we can definitely read the whole length of articles. But usually we from the abstract, we try to extract the information. Mostly the key findings would be there. So like the process of this is appraisal is a process of assessing and interpreting evidence by systematically considering its validity and its relevance to the questions. So whatever the report we see, we do not trust blindly. We do the critical appraisal. It means it means that it is validly presented. It is systematically presented. It is worth to read. So we just try to appraise like, and we prioritize based on that the pyramid. So usually look at the study study designs for the internal validity, external validity, and also we try to determine any bias in this study. Sometimes there might be a bias, which might be difficult to generalize the findings. So we look at these in the, when we look at the paper. So in the right corner, I put a one flow chart. This is the taken from the Center for Evidence-Based Medicine, CEBM. Here, basically, three stages are given, Q1, Q2, and Q3. At the Q1 level, we are not going in detail about what are they, but how they are retrieved, we just we, we use in appraisal. We just look at this. The first level, we look at this, whether if it is a simple descriptive population or the quality of the relationship between factors are described. If it is simply the descriptive study, uh, in this case, we we do not need to use PICO because we cannot use PICO. We just use PO, patient population and outcome. So like prevalence of refractive error in children. Suppose we can say prevalence of refractive error in children. Here in the patient or population is children, intervention. You can say refractive error, but outcome also would be refractive error. So this is just BPO. And in the left hand, and if it has a, it quantifies the relationship between the factors, then it will be analytical. In analytical con conditions, we definitely can use PICO. Then that means you can have, you can see that which evidence is more reliable based on that. The comparative component means always stronger than the non-comparative study. The second in second level, if you look at analysis, question Q2. Was the intervention randomly allocated? We look at this. If it is randomly allocated, that means it is a randomized clinical trials, which is better than randomly non allocated paper, allocated papers. So in the randomized clinical trial, these are the experimental we normally call. There are different types of experimental studies. We do not go in detail about that at this moment. And the if there is, they are not randomly allocated, that might be just simple comparison. So there might be simple observations. So we call it as observational studies. So that means experimental studies are stronger than observational studies. In observational studies, we again ask questions that when was the outcome determined? So we look at intervention versus outcome. When was the outcome determined? If outcome is determined at the same time intervention done, that is normally called cross-sectional studies. 
cross sectional or analytical studies, you can say cross sectional studies. If intervention is done at this time and we look at the outcome after some time, maybe a month or maybe a few days, in that case, it is called cohort studies. So you can see that what's the longitudinality. So longitudinal study is better than the cross sectional study. This is you can also look. And another is that intention is done in the past, but your outcome is measuring at present. That is called case control studies. So we can look at these also. So this way we can find out which evidence is robust than the, the other studies. So this way also we appraise. I hope this makes clear. There are few more critical appraisal tools are available. Uh, normally, uh, these tools are used. They are given by the Center for Evidence-Based Medicine again, CEBM. That's the separate appraisal tool for systematic reviews, randomized control trials, randomized studies, uh, diagnostic accuracy, prognosis. And one more, I have just put the link to this critical appraisal tool. So I'm not going into detail about this. You can, we can do this later also. The next part, the fourth part is the apply. So appraisal, in this case, we apply the appraise evidence to patient and practice. So for this part, normally, there are three components, principally, we should consider in our decision-making process. The, the, the foremost, which we talked, is the best available research evidence. We look, we, we put this at one side, at the one facet. The second is the practitioner's experience, the practitioner's knowledge, uh, the, the resources he has. In his clinic, we put this at the second at the second facet, and the at the third facet, we look at the patient side. So, patients' characteristics, their need, their values, and their preferences. So, sometimes the best treatment we decide the patient may not want, or may sometimes because of the economic issue also they may not mind it prefer. So, we need to take the consideration of those factors also. So, component of these three makes a decision making process and we apply in our practice. And the final one is audit. Basically, we use this, this to identify gaps between the best available research evidence and actual practice. And this also encourages us to periodically review our reports critically. So what we are doing, how we are managing the cases, is the appropriate or not, so we can review that also. Basically, it helps us assess and adjust, like follow-ups, review of management plans. So follow-up also when you should follow up in a week or in a month. That also guided by this evidence, a uh, side effect of the treatment. Uh, maybe treatment is okay. The patient might develop new symptoms. Treatment reviews also. And if the patient needs referral, this all also can be audited in the last sections. I think this is all um, um, I would like to talk today. So basically, how we do the appraisals. So just to summarize, so we should not forget five A's. Ask, acquire, appraise, apply, audit. In the ask, we use, uh, simply if we use PICO, that is best. P means patient, population, or problem patient population problem p stands for i stands for intervention c stands for comparison and o stands for outcome so we have 5a and pico pico these are the summaries of today's talk if you remember and you apply i hope you you may not get overwhelmed with the information you acquired for your practice so you can use you can find a minimum amount of information but very critically reviewed informations and uh, you can review with ease and you can apply in your practice uh, thank you with this i i must say thank you for listening all of you thank you sir it was a great session and i hope everybody now i would like to take questions if somebody has a question thank you yeah